Hey guys, this is Lisa from TRW, and in this video, I'm going to be continuing on all my fun Christmas crafts, and I am actually pressing this design onto a buffalo plaid tablecloth. Now, this design is just under four feet long, so I used Silhouette Studio, and the great thing is I did not use Business Edition, so this is something you can cut right away out of your Silhouette Studio uh, software. And I pressed this using my craft press, my 9x12 pink craft press. So a fun video where you can use whatever materials you have or whatever equipment you have to get something cool and awesome done. All right, so I am in Silhouette Studio. I've already typed out my message. I'm using the TRW holiday font and I've already went ahead and I welded it. So it's one, one thing to keep in mind is I did do a tiny bit of point editing over here with my R's because I, I just wanted them to look a different way. So what I did is I took each word and I kept it on its own. I wanted my overall design to be about 48 inches wide. I want, I want a really big design on my tablecloth, but here's the thing. My design is only about six and a half inches tall. So there are a couple problems with that. If I were to jump over and use our Graph Tech cutter, which is our 24 inch cutter, I'm gonna be cutting up four feet of vinyl, but then I'm going to be having about six inches left over of all of that. So really I'm wasting about two feet of vinyl when I do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break apart the design, cut it on one foot sections of glitter, and then I will piece it together on my tablecloth. So you can see I have them all set like this. I'm gonna kind of move these out of the way. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my page to be the correct size. So glitter vinyl is 12 inches wide and 20 inches long. So I went ahead and set this 12 by 20 and I won't be cutting with the cutting mat. Now, if you have a 24 inch cutting mat, you can totally use it. It's probably a really good idea, but I don't have one and I don't typically use them. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it up like this. Now, the biggest thing to remember when you were doing a uh, vinyl without a cutting mat is that you need to keep track of this red box here, which is your cut border. And that option's down here at the bottom of your page panel if you don't have that. That is the amount of safe space you have for your material to cut. Keep in mind with your machine, you have to have your rollers holding onto your material and then the rollers at the end to feed it in and out. So you can't actually cut to the very, very, very end of your vinyl because there will be nothing to hold onto your vinyl. So we're gonna go ahead, bring this over. I'm gonna click on it one time to get that green rotate dot. And I'm gonna hold down shift so it rotates at 45 degree increments, and now I have it set like that. So let's go ahead, bring this down, and bring this over. So I'm using my arrows to adjust. And you can see I'm gonna cut it close, but it's still within my safe cutting area. So I'm gonna nudge it down a couple so it gets a little bit closer there. So pretty good. If I were you, I would kind of push it closer to the top of your uh, material instead of the bottom, just to be safe right there. But we should be pretty good. So I'm gonna set up like that, and now I'm gonna go over and grab this and I'm gonna rotate it the same way. Now don't forget, I do need to mirror this for my cut, but because I have it like this, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it like that. Now grab both of these, right click, flip horizontally. So the next one, this will fit right in there, so I'll set that up after. Let's go ahead to our sun panel. I'm gonna turn on my machine so we can see it over here. Let's go over here to my sun panel and we have this going on, which sometimes that happens. So we're gonna select this right here, turn on cut, and kind of go like that. <clears throat> so you can see it went kind of weird. What I did is I just copied it and opened it into a new work area. So let's go over here. Let's go ahead and load my material and then we're going to cut. And then after that, I'm just gonna load my next one and cut it. So I will see you once I'm all cut and we will weed this. So I have my tablecloth laid out. So this is an eight foot table. This is actually bigger than the table I'm really going to put this on. So you can see it's a little bit short, but that's okay. It's again, like I said, longer than I was gonna put it on. Now the great thing about getting these new tablecloths is these folds actually give me a good indicator of where the middle is. So I went ahead and placed this on here. We have our three separate pieces. Now this tablecloth is from Hobby Lobby. I got it from their Christmas section, which is like, so stinking good right now guys I can't believe it but I got it from there and this is about 55 percent cotton 30 or 40 no yeah maybe like 40 percent polyester and then it was like the rest of it was other material which 
I don't know what they mean by that, but hey, it's other material. So whenever you're pressing onto something large that has to go into multiple presses, my key or my trick or whatever you want to call it is I put so much tape on it. So this is TRW Magic Heat Tape. Now this is, you know, pretty much like having, you know, clear plastic scotch tape, but it's made to withstand the heat of your heat press. Now what I'm doing is I'm taping it a lot to make sure my vinyl doesn't shift while I'm pressing it. So I like to do these little X's and kind of really tape it down because I don't, again, I don't want it to shift. So the more tape, the less it's going to move. And that's what I'm going to do with that. So I'm going to go ahead, keep taping this, and then I will move over to the heat press and we will start pressing. Okay guys, I put a lot of tape on this, but honestly, I don't want my design to move. And really, the cost of heat tape is very small. The roll, I think, is about 150 feet. So it's very affordable, you know, it'll all be fine. So we're gonna go over, and I'm gonna press this, and I'm actually going to be pressing this on my pink press. So I'm gonna go ahead, get set up over there, and then we will press. Okay guys. So I pressed, I forgot to press record, <laughs> but let me tell you what I just did. So I have these presses down here and I've already pressed these for a couple seconds a piece. Now my big piece of advice when you're pressing onto something little like this is I put like a table or a chair or in this case, a little um, filing cabinet to the side here. It holds some of the weight of your tablecloth so you can press. Now, even though this is taped a lot, I have my heat press set to 305 degrees. And I'm still just tacking down my design for a couple seconds and then moving it on. The reason being is that you want to make sure you get your vinyl adhered as quickly as possible so that it doesn't move around. And so if you do your quick tack, you can get your vinyl onto your tablecloth quickly. And then you can remove your carrier and you won't have your car carrier kind of move a little bit during pressing. And that's how you kind of get your uneven and crooked presses. So let's go back to the beginning. We're just going to peel up where all this heat tape is and go from there. And the other reason why I'm doing quick presses is that I don't want to put too much heat on my tablecloth because that'll cause it to kind of pucker. So we're just going to kind of go right there. And I'm just going to peel this off. Then we'll finish off our pressing. All right, so now we're all good. I'm basically taking my tablecloth, folding it over a little bit so I can press it easily over there. And now I'm just going to do the rest of these for about five to six seconds. So again, I don't want too much heat on it because we don't want it to pucker. All right, so we got all of our presses done. I'm gonna jump up and show you this whole thing. So that is my finished product. So not too hard, super simple. Now the key to doing these big designs and multiple presses is that you wanna make sure you're taping it down to keep it in place. Now again, if you missed earlier, this tablecloth is from Hobby Lobby. I used the 50% off Christmas sale to get it, but really, really cool. I think it's gonna look nice on my table for Christmas time, and it's a fun way to use glitter vinyl with the so popular buffalo plaid pattern. So if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos and lots more Christmas crafts, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're uploading all the time.